So all the footage that you're seeing in the slideshow, that's the that's the results of our work hitting the streets. We've been in, on all the major neighborhoods, going out promoting peace. And during that time, we didn't want to just be out there, but we wanted to be properly trained. And so we called on Captain Dennis, who is one of the best to train. He's a trainer of men. Right. Huh? Right. And so he came in and started the training and training us and left us with a training unit that we had to complete. So these men had undergone a, a training in love thyself, right. in proper handling of people, right. in conflict mediation, right. nonviolent crisis intervention. Right. We gave them a training in self-defense. Right. We gave them a training in CPR and first aid. Right. So when you see these men with the orange shirts, we're not just out there, we are trained and certified right. Right. on how to promote peace in our community. Right. So we was put on a, on a, on a course to train. Right. And so today we celebrate that we crossing that line. Yes, but we're not stopping today. We really just getting started. Yes, this is right. the official launching right. of the 10,000 fearless peacemakers right. in Boston. Right. Now it's official. Right. So what I want to do is call up a few brothers. You know, like every graduation, you have a valedictorian and you have those. <laughs> Star students, yeah. right? That you want to hear from, and so I want to call up a few of the brothers that are very instrumental, who have been here throughout, who've been some of the brothers that are like the glue to help keep the ten thousand fearless peacemakers going. Because as I said, this is not a Nation of Islam exclusive initiative. Right. Yeah. This is not just the FOI. Yeah. And so this is an inclusion, an inclusive group, and so we need a brother that can help us keep that together. Right. So I want to bring up a few brothers to say a few words who have, who have been moved and talk about their inspiration in coming into the 10,000 Fearless and, and their experience. So without further ado, our first one I want to call up is our brother. He's a local hip-hop artist. Uh, he got a video out. Um, outside, check them out on YouTube. Yes. Beautiful artist, beautiful brother, hardworking brother. Let's give a warm round of applause to our brother, DL Daniel Lorenz. Tupac was murdered. Um, I felt a certain way. I was in my room. I cried for days. I remember my father coming in. What you crying for? He didn't know you. If you died, he would be crying. I'm like, oh. you know, I'm like, that. I was about to swear. Sorry. Um, so anyway, fast forward. You know, Nipsey gets murdered, and the same feeling mm -hmm. that I had when Tupac was murdered, I felt as an adult. And now I'm married. I have children. And it's just an odd, weird, because when I'm a kid, you can stay in your room and close your door and just kind of be That's by yourself. Right. Um, but as an adult, you know what I'm saying, we deal with our trauma, we move on, we keep moving forward. Um, fast forward, you know, Miss um, Eleanor Maloney was murdered on the end of my street. Um, actually, when I came home, um, I seen, you know, she was already covered, but I seen her feet. Um, and then, you know, maybe, a week or two after that, there was a woman mysteriously that was murdered. I think a hit and run, you know, on High Walker Street. Mm -hmm. And I came home, I happened to leave work early and I seen her body on the ground. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, a meeting was called. I basically felt like there's something that I have to do. Um, what was appealing to me was, you know, an hour of doing something is better than 24 hours of doing nothing. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. So, you know. So, you know, if Minister Randy would have stood up here and said, you know, we need brothers, you know, four days a week, five hours, I would have just kind of snuck out the back door and never came back. But basically, you know, one hour of doing something, I can commit that. That's the least I can do. Um, I want to make sure that my kids are safe, other people's kids are safe. 
um, and just one person at a time. From there, you know, to wrap it up, from there, um, you know, I met some 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 brothers who I feel like, you know, for life will be will be brothers. Mm -hmm. um, That's right. That's my brother Ro right there, you know, he's the director of DYS. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I've been going there every Wednesday and talking to ages 15, 18, and they're right. gun related mm -hmm. crimes. Right. And I, I wrote 10 principles that I'm trying to get people to buy into. And the principles are not really crazy. It's basically common sense, you know, knowing your smoke, um, identifying safe zones, making sure that, you know, you identify people who are actually involved in the streets versus civilians. Because there's two different codes, and it likes to, you know, people like to blend the two, and it's just different. You know, no snitching doesn't apply to a kid who's coming from school and he's 15 years old. It doesn't apply to a grandmother who right. is murdered in front of our house. That's not that's not no snitching. So there's a there's a very fine line. There's a difference. Right. Um, you know, Danny has been doing phenomenal work. Yeah. We've been helping him in his efforts and going to OP, going to different projects, going to different streets. <laughs> You know, for me, as being an artist, um, everything moving forward is going to be very intentional. I don't want to waste words. I don't want to waste moments. I don't want to waste opportunities. Um, I feel like people don't necessarily like to be preached to, so I'm going to be very mindful in the messages that I put out, but I'm going to put the medicine in the candy. And, um, you know, I'm, I just want to do my part, and I'm, I'm proud to be a part of 10,000 Fearless. <laughs> Next up, we want to bring up uh, the brother, one of the brothers he just mentioned, um, which is a very, very, very hard working brother. Uh, this brother came on board with us um, from 10 10 15. He was part of that Justice So Else movement. He was part of the local organizing committee to help us to organize that effort to get our people to the 20th anniversary of the Million Man March. And when we came back, we were charged with keeping the LOC together and working to establish the nine ministries. And Brother Danny stood up then in the leadership capacity, doing all that he could. And as we pushed to establish the 10,000 fearless, then he was right there, again, leading the charge. He's the leader of the 10,000 fearless. He's actually uh, one of the, the, the main leaders of the head of the 10,000 fearless, because you know I, I can't do it all, actually. I need brothers like Danny and others that can help organize, and that's what uh, brothers like DL and Danny have been doing. But Brother Danny spearheaded a very important initiative that DL uh, alluded to. He could talk a little bit more where we were able to uh, secure uh, funding and feed the, the poor. I'm not going to steal his thunder. Right. But without further ado, help me to bring up our big brother, Brother Danny. Bring him on with us. Thank you. Can you hear me all right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We look good out here. Thank you. Uh, we look good in this Amish. Yes, sir. And I, I'll be the first to admit orange is not my favorite color. <laughs> orange is the new black. <laughs> because we got these new sweatshirts on and you might know if you wear a new hoodie, you might get fuzzies in your head. So if everybody's charged, you see a brother with fuzzies on his head, <laughs> let him know, don't let us look like we walk with an spider web for the rest of the day. <laughs> um, I just want to talk about uh, coalitions and building and designing programs. Um, what the brothers here have been talking about, the food distribution program has been a journey. And it started with the 10,000 fearless. It started when we were going through uh, H block. And this was probably about our fourth um, weekend out. And it was the first time we actually, you know, we had spoke to a lot of family members, a lot of uh, concerned citizens, a lot of neighbors. But this is the first time we went into brothers that were on their block, standing there. Um, Brother Randy walked up to him and started having the conversation about what our movement was. They were into it. And, um, but one of the things that they said to us that kind of sparked this whole idea, they said, look, there's only five neighborhoods in Boston that we don't have a problem with. 
So what if I go up, I want to do something as simple as buy a shirt or go and get a plate, uh, food, you know, for my family. And it made me think that, you know, a lot of people that have, that qualify for resources, they might not be going to where the, the access to these resources are. It might be out of lack of transportation, unsafe neighborhood, they might be undocumented, anxiety, whatever it is. So we decided to be able to deliver those resources directly to the people. So we ended up raising money to buy a food truck. We raised $10,000, we bought a food truck. Um, and our hunger prevention program had been basically towards the homeless, down in Boston Commons, Copley, um, Boston Medical Center area. But what happened is Rachel Rollins, the subject DA, she announced that she was going to take some of the drug forfeiture money um, that their office seizes and reinvest it back yeah. into the community. Yeah. 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 So we applied for a grant that was based around addressing the issue of youth violence. And we designed a program that we would use what we were doing and go into these neighborhoods that were affected by high uh, incidents of youth violence. Uh, so we came over here to Grant Grove Hall. There's a restaurant right across the street called Food for the Soul, and we cooked up jerk chicken, barbecue chicken, barbecue jerk, roasted chicken, cabbage, rice. We plated it with the help of these brothers here. Um, one brother, Brother Kermit. Is Brother Kermit here? Yeah. Thank you, brother. That brother was there every night, every morning for the station. Brother Kyle was there. Everything was coming out for the, the plant, the distribution. Sister Dora, back there, how to say. We went down into Trotter Park in the H Block area and we fed that community in the park, sat down with the kids, had conversations. Because what we want to do, and this is what the 10,000 Fields mission is, is to, to, to build trust in our community, to, right. to open up dialogue with the kids to figure out and solve problems, not just to be present, but to, to start moving things forward towards the direction of peace that we're, we're looking for. Um, and, and it was a success, but also a learning experience. So we ended up just being in the streets, cars were driving by and we just handed out plates because we didn't know how fast it was going to go. We didn't want to be sitting there for hours. And I said to myself after the first one, I said, you know, we're not, we, these people driving by, they might be from Cambridge. You know, we, we're trying to feed the people of Rockstar. <laughs> so uh, two weeks later, we went to Orchard Park. And we said, we, we're going we gonna to set up here, but we're going to walk around through these projects. And we're going to go right. door to door, and we're going to talk to the people and bring them out and invite them back down or sit with them where they at, at their doorsteps, on their, on their porches. That's right. um, and it was a whole different dynamic. And every time we got better at what we were doing, we got more efficient, we got more proficient um, and, and more impactful. And so, you know, and it was so successful. So this was a pilot program. When I say about programming and designing and coalition, there was no food truck. There was no hunger program here in Boston. It was all ideas and support that we put together through Rachel Rollins, through Ikna Relief, through the 10,000 Failures, through all the different um, people that helped support us. Um, but it wouldn't be, the concept, the concept wouldn't even be fathomable without the 10,000 Failures. I would not have said, I'm going to bring in volunteers from Wayland and Sharon, which is my donor base, and march through Orchard Park. I couldn't ensure their safety. Mm -hmm. I couldn't ensure their comfort level. Mm -hmm. Without an organization like the Fearless, I wouldn't even have had the idea to bring these people in to walk mm -hmm. around mm -hmm. uh, Harambe Park, mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. a rash of shootings had just happened a week before. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so this is essential. And I remember having this conversation before the 10,000 failures were formed when I would see the FOI in uh, you know, Franklin Park. I said, that's the only organization that can keep the peace in this city. I said, they don't have to do anything. Just their presence. And, uh, and I said, you know, I wish I could be a part of that. So this expansion of the 10,000 failures to, to, to reach out and to embrace and envelop right, right. every every 
denomination, every religion, Brilliant. Brilliant. every faith, Brilliant. multi generational. That's right. Come on, uh, you see every tone, skin tone up there. Right. Every speak multiple languages. That's right. Dear um, you know, so that is what it's about. And what I'm very excited about today, and I'm sure we'll get into it, is the opening of the 10,000 Fearless to include women. That are women. Yeah. Yeah. I think we rolled it out the right way. I think we, I think it, as a as a visual, they needed to see black men yes, being held right. accountable, yes, right. being right. responsible, showing brotherhood, yes. showing unity. Um, but that was never the end game. You know, right. we wanted to make sure that when we go out there, we were consistent, that we could be out there with a force that could ensure the safety of our women and our children. That's right. Right. So I'm gonna ask the fellas, brothers, can we keep our women? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can. The men, the women, and the children, that's family. That's right. But what's the extension of family? That's community. That's right. So now that's we can right. keep our women and children safe, and now it's time to work on our community. Yes, sir. All right, so I thank y'all for being here. We look great. Right.